Last year, Fayetteville residents voted against a $4.9 million tax increase to help fund the project. Now, they're being asked again to vote on a new tax increase. I'm here on Mount Comfort Road where ongoing construction has been causing local residents and drivers delay since this summer. Reporting here at the Battle of Prairie Grove, for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. This Saturday is the Holiday Farmers Market here on the square and the last one of the season. Avenauer's documentary titled Therapeutic Justice recently drew a big crowd to its premiere in the Arkansas Union Theater. A city tradition for years, the Fayetteville Farmers Market is wrapping up this year's season. From April to November, vendors sell locally grown fruit and vegetables, art, jewelry, and flowers. Young and old, there's nothing lacking on the square when these vendors are out on Saturday mornings. Take or treat, smell my feet, give me something good to eat. It's our little festival. It's really wonderful. Although everyone has their own reasons for enjoying the farmer's market, there's one common thing everyone loves. The people. Yeah, the people here are great. And the organization of the farmer's market, too. You know, it's completely run by the farmers that are here selling. So that's a, a wonderful part of it. We always have had really great participation with the city. So that type of support by the community and the administration of the city is wonderful. This Saturday is the holiday farmer's market here on the square and the last one of the season. It's the perfect time to get those fresh fruits and vegetables, do some early Christmas shopping, or just enjoy the atmosphere. Reporting for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. The building of a new Fayetteville High School has not come without debate. Last year, Fayetteville residents voted against a $4.9 million tax increase to help fund the project. Now, they're being asked again to vote on a new tax increase. Many are hopeful that the reduced tax plan will urge voters to vote yes in the upcoming millage election. This new tax will help pay for phase two of the $113 million project. And this phase includes new learning centers, auxiliary gyms, a new media center, a new library, and many other classroom improvements. Now, so far, the campaign has received support from many local groups and organizations, including the Northwest Arkansas Times, the Fayetteville Chamber of Commerce, and the Arkansas Labor Council. Uh, there is also no known opposition to these plans. This makes many hopeful that the plan will be passing in the upcoming election. Polls for the 2010 millage election open at 7.30 September 21st and close at 7.30 that night. Early voting is already underway at the Washington County Courthouse. For more information on the Fayetteville High School project and voting, go to fayar.net. Reporting for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. I'm here on Mount Comfort Road where ongoing construction has been causing local residents and drivers delay since this summer. Now the construction goes from Ruffle to Porter Road and consists of widening the now two lane road to four and five lanes. Along with the widening of the road, there are also bike lanes and sidewalks being put in place. But many local residents are more than ready for the construction to be finished. Uh, it's awful. Uh, we never know when traffic's going to be backed up, when there's going to be delays. It's made me late for class quite a few times. Although some of the construction has been done during the evening, there are still flaggers and lane shifts day and night along the road. The speed limit here on Mount Comfort Road has been bumped down to 20 miles an hour, and the set completion date is November 30th, a day that can't come soon enough for Fayetteville drivers. Reporting here for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. Cannon shots, gunfire, wartime hurrahs. That was the scene on December 7th, 1862, and this weekend at the Battle of Prairie Grove, right here in Northwest Arkansas. At this year's Civil War reenactments at the Battlefield State Park, participants and local residents took a step back in time to see a first-hand account of the battle. During the half-hour event, the crowd saw each phase of the battle and followed the fighting as it happened right before their eyes. It's quite an adrenaline rush. It's hard not to become emotional in the middle of it. Uh, a lot of these guys are real good at what they do. They, they take it very seriously. Uh, you, you're, you're marching, you got guys falling next to you and cannons shooting at you. It almost feels like they're hitting you in the chest when they shoot. 
The Prairie Grove reenactments are held every other year, bringing thousands of people who are eager to both watch and get the experience of living during the war years. I do love the, the camp life, setting up the tent, you know, cooking over an open fire and things like that, but definitely the battle is always the best part. Although nearly 150 years ago, this battle marked the last major Civil War engagement here in Northwest Arkansas, these men and women have been here all weekend setting up camp to reenact and commemorate the soldiers who fought and died during our great Civil War. Reporting here at the Battle of Prairie Grove, for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. I'm here at the University of Arkansas Hyper Building where a new dance class is being added to the schedule. The street style dance of popping is being taught every Tuesday this month. Now popping originated in California in the 1970s and has been gaining popularity ever since. Now there are dance studios all over the country designated specifically for popping and street styles of dance. Popping is also known for being the form of dance in most street style dance offs. Now, though these U of A students aren't looking for a dance off anytime soon, they've really enjoyed the class. The teacher is very, um, he's really nice about it, and he really like tries to help you figure out how to pop and how to move your body so that it looks like what he's doing. And he's really patient with you, so it's really great. It's a really good atmosphere. The class is great for beginners who want to learn more about hip hop or experienced hip hop dancers who just want to come and have fun. If you're interested in learning how to pop or just to take a fun dance class, come join the next one October 26th at 8 p.m. in the Hyper. Reporting for UATV, I'm Katie Beck. I can reflect that your motion for revocation is dismissed. Washington right. County Drug Fourth Court. Court for some, it's a final fire. chance to turn their lives around. Well, good afternoon. And others, sorry, the last straw and well, payment for their careless fire. actions. Emmy Award-winning filmmaker and University of Arkansas graduate Jesse Abenauer has been following Judge Marianne Gunn's drug court for the past several years, doing research and compiling a documentary film on the court. After months of sitting in the courtroom, following its students, and countless interviews, his film was finally ready for release. I am a, a big believer in just allowing reality to be transmitted like this is real life, and this is a public court proceeding, so let's just show it. Abenauer's documentary titled Therapeutic Justice recently drew a big crowd to its premiere in the Arkansas Union Theater, including students, faculty, and community members. If we show these people's stories from you know the beginning to the end, we see them uh, at their low point, we see them at their high point, and it's just, that's kind of life. Judge Marianne Gunn's Drug Court is aired on Jones TV, and Abenauer's film will make its debut on UATV October 27th at 8 p.m. Reporting for UATV, I'm Katie Beck.